Welcome to the GCP Mindset channel. Today's topic is Regulatory Authority Inspections in Clinical Trials, Part 2. So if we will look now into the, some data uh, which were shared by individual uh, regulatory agencies. So let's start first with EMA, the European Medicines Agency, and especially with the data which were shared by Good Clinical Practice Inspectors Working Group. So there are several reports uh, which I took uh, as a source of information for this free web seminar. Uh, and these are uh, one report for the period uh, of 12 years uh, between 2000 and 2012, where more, nearly 400 uh, GCP inspections have been performed. Then also the period of 2019 and the most recent 2019, uh, where there are covered uh, nearly about uh, 100 GCP inspections uh, per year. All these EMA reports are publicly available on web pages and you have the links directly in the presentation. So when we look into the uh, summary report from 2000 to 2012, you can see here a peak uh, in performing the number of inspections, either triggered or routine, which start after 2006. Uh, which was caused also by uh, availability of inspection uh, guidelines and uh, guidances for the inspectors how to perform, plan and report uh, the inspections and to effectively uh, support uh, the conduct of clinical trials uh, in EU. Um, in this report, uh, there were uh, the number of inspections uh, were sorted by type of the inspection site. And as you can see, 71% uh, of all inspections performed in these 12 years uh, were related to the clinical investigator and the investigational sites. Uh, then it is followed by 15% uh, by the sponsor and 5% by CRO. If you will look into the report from 2019, you can see that the numbers are uh, decreasing in terms of percentage on clinical investigator sites. Uh, from 71%, uh, it decreased to 59%. And uh, there is a more significant uh, increase of performing the GCP inspections at the sponsor side. So from 15%, uh, it's more than 20%. Uh, in 2018, and also the CRO uh, increased from five to 10, so doubled. So the CRO uh, are also more in focus uh, of GCP inspections nowadays, and the rest uh, are the usually the analytical laboratories or some additional technical facilities included in clinical trials. In 2019, uh, again, the majority was done uh, at uh, clinical investigator side and uh, nearly uh, 20, 28 uh, inspections were performed uh, out of 120 uh, at the sponsor and also CRO is uh, uh, in the scope of these inspections as well. So you can see that the percentage is nearly uh, the similar to 2019. 18. Uh, from 2019 report, uh, you can see also uh, the variation of non-routine and routine inspections performed in that year, and that uh, the majority of the inspections were performed either in the USA, Middle East, Asia, Pacific region, or EU, and uh, that most non-routine uh, inspections were performed in Middle East, Asia, and Pacific region. And uh, this is uh, uh, only a graph uh, simulation of uh, these inspections conducted per region and type of the inspection. And what is the critic, uh, what is the interesting uh, comparison is also the number and percentage of findings by grading. So you can see here the development of grading and number of findings uh, over the years. From the summary report from 2000 to 2012, uh, there were 9% of critical findings followed by 6% of critical findings in 2018. And uh, this increase uh, to 10% of critical findings in 2019. 
I don't see uh, any alarming, uh, big alarming um, uh, signal in terms of uh, uh, critical or major uh, percentage um, distribution. However, what I see as a, a very interesting fact is that there is a decreasing um, minor percentage of minor findings, which is uh, in my opinion, something which we should look more critically uh, on that point. Because if we are decreasing minor findings, however, in the same time, the critical findings are increasing. This is something which is not a really good trend and should be closely observed. Why we are focusing on solving the minor issues and not the critical ones. So uh, maybe the answer could be also uh, easier when looking uh, more in detail uh, what are included in the critical findings. So let's have a look. Uh, what kind of uh, the uh, categories are rated uh, as a most critical? So most critical categories are general one. I will uh, provide you some more data later on what are included in general uh, category the trial management of the sponsor. And please uh, don't forget that under the sponsor is also the CRO uh, who is delegated by the sponsor to perform certain tasks. So it's a, such a joint uh, responsibility. And also the investigational side is uh, uh, also very important because uh, at the investigational side, the data are uh, generated and uh, based on the quality of generated data, the results uh, could be either successful or uh, lead to failure. So when we're looking to the categories uh, of uh, EMA inspection uh, findings of the three main categories from general trial management and the investigational side, uh, from the general, it's related to the contracts or agreements, uh, essential documents, uh, uh, not surprisingly, uh, direct access to the data, which is something which could be alarming in case there is no granted direct access to source data. Also, uh, there is uh, source documentation itself uh, rated as a critical uh, and the other uh, activities like the organizational and personal qualification training and so on. Um, and uh, if we will look to the trial management of the sponsor responsibility, uh, there is uh, the uh, clinical study report together with the audit and the majority of critical findings were targeted to data management. Uh, the second place for the critical findings at the trial management at the sponsor side, there is the document control and monitoring. Uh, and additional uh, critical findings have been also noted down in the protocol or case report form and diary questionnaires design. And also uh, together with the clinical study report, the statistical analysis uh, have been uh, commented uh, in a critical way. And the investigational side, uh, where is the majority of, uh, of uh, criticality, of course, is the compliance. Is the protocol compliance uh, and either in uh, the, the, the general one or on the safety parameters or selection criteria, the inclusion exclusion criteria, uh, and then also the assessment of efficacy of the uh, study treatment and subsequently also reporting in the ECRF or CRF itself and the diary of uh, the patient. Uh, if we look into the uh, disposal of number and categorization of findings and clinical investigator sites, uh, you can see that the criticality, the most critical findings are uh, at the sponsor side, at the trial management category, uh, followed by the general and the also informed consent and the investigational side. If we look uh, in the categorization, categorization of findings at the sponsor sites, uh, the trial management is on the top. Uh, so including the oversight of the sponsor uh, and the general parts uh, like the contracts, organization, training, uh, and so on. 
and the computer system. Nowadays, most of the studies are run uh, electronically or everything is run electronically. And of course, the computer systems has to fulfill all the required uh, uh, validation procedures and validation uh, documents, including audit trail. And if this is not fulfilled, and this is only the example, then of course, it uh, may lead to critical finding. Number and categorization of findings at CROs uh, are also listed separately in this graph. And again, it's uh, the majority is in a general category, uh, as I said, including the contracts, training, uh, organization of personnel. Uh, and the others, uh, including the trial management, meaning the oversight about the study, which was also delegated by the sponsor, or also the subject protection, informed consent forms, and the investigational medicinal products uh, like a handling and supplying, and also the computer system used in clinical trials. Uh, the report from 2019 uh, do not provide uh, many uh, additional details. However, if we look back to the previous report, there are also some more data in percentage. So this is not the most uh, updated data available. However, still, I think uh, they are very interesting to have in mind in, in case, uh, for example, for any future review of the data for auditing, for quality monitoring, or or, uh, for any setup of internal processes uh, where to put the, um, the importance. So uh, in terms of investigator responsibility, uh, it's uh, reporting in the ECRF and diary and followed by the source documentation. Sure, if uh, the source documentation is not created, uh, it's not really good uh, because they are not supporting data for uh, submitting it uh, later on. However, uh, the most uh, tricky part is when they are transcribing the data from source documentation to the CRF or to some diaries or questionnaires. Uh, so therefore, these both uh, parts or these both uh, action steps in uh, conducting the clinical trial on uh, investigator sites uh, are the most critical ones. And they are followed by the essential documents, uh, which means uh, the supporting, uh, providing the clinical trial uh, according to GCP and protocol rules and regulatory requirements rules uh, should be also supported by adequate essential documents and the minimum of essential documents are specified in ICA GCP. Uh, afterwards, it's uh, followed by the protocol compliance, especially the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Uh, and uh, additionally, the organizational and personnel informed consent process, uh, co protocol compliance in terms of safety reporting. There are still uh, less reported or underreported uh, adverse events or late uh, reports of SAEs and additional. From the sponsor responsibility uh, of the total findings uh, on the first place, it was the monitoring. Uh, it was uh, three, uh, three years ago. Uh, or four years ago uh, uh, for, for that period and uh, also followed by the essential documents. Uh, again, if uh, there is uh, no proof or not a good evidence in place to prove the data collection and processing and uh, analyzing, then uh, there is a really big issue in terms of proving it afterwards and also with uh, tight following of data management. Nowadays, the data management uh, critical findings, uh, as you have seen, are arising because of many electronic systems used, and therefore the focus should be also in future uh, more targeted to data management. Uh, also, uh, let's say internal auditing processes and the system themselves. Uh, there are also joint responsibilities findings in terms of sponsor and the investigate, investigator. So it's not surprising that on the first place is the essential documents. Uh, altogether, there are on the uh, most uh, uh, higher level of findings. Uh, followed by the reporting data in uh, uh, CRF and also source documentation. 
So these were data available uh, in abbreviated way uh, from EMA. Of course, if you would like to have more inside details in uh, the previous reports as well, uh, they are uh, publicly available. And uh, in addition to also the EMA uh, inspection working group uh, guidelines and guidances, how to perform uh, and how to report individual uh, uh, inspections like GCP or of the sponsor of the site of the laboratory and so on, you can find very useful instructions or guidances uh, directly on the website. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time. Bye bye.